serving the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. Good evening, friends, and Happy New Year. Uh, glad you could join us tonight. Uh, we've had a lot of ground to cover tonight, and we're going to kind of bounce around in three or four different categories and kind of revisit some issues and topics from last week's show. Uh, before we get into that, though, I want to share a bit of sad news with you tonight. I don't know how many of you knew uh, Ben Langley, longtime mechanic here in Rocky Mount. He and I worked together eons ago at Chipley Lincoln Mercury. Uh, he was a mechanic and I worked in the parts department, but I got to know him very well and considered him a friend. Uh, in later years, he worked for, I think, Don Bullock Chevrolet, Davenport Motor Company. Uh, sadly, Ben passed away last night uh, after an extended illness. He'd been on the weather for the last two or three years. The last time I saw him, in fact, was in the hospital a couple of years ago. And uh, I was still shocked to hear of his passing. He was a really good guy. Uh, you may have remembered, Ben's dad was a police officer, Rocky Mountain Police officer. I think his name was Ben, too, actually. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to share that with you for those that may remember Ben Langley. Um, next week, we're going to have a special guest for the entire one hour length of the show. Uh, some of you may remember, I spent probably a year, a year and a half ago now, we had a young lady on, uh, Adrian Copeland. Um, Adrian is heading up to Preservation Rocky Mount Society here in town. Uh, they're doing some magnificent things and uh, you know, salvaging a property, trying to save old buildings. Uh, they've got some ongoing projects year-round, but anyway, they've got a massive fundraiser. They've acquired an old tobacco warehouse. I'm not sure which one it is. I'll try to find out between now and next week's show. But they're raising money trying to fix that old warehouse up so they can use it. Um, they run a, a, a store, if you will, whereby they sell salvaged uh, items from old homes and old business, everything from bathtubs and sinks uh, to windows and doors. Um, they're just trying to keep this stuff and going to landfill, number one, and also trying to preserve some of our local history, number two. And so it's a great cause. They're a great bunch of folks. Um, I've had the pleasure of talking with Adrian a couple times in the past, and uh, I'm just really more than behind what they're doing. I think it's a great idea of what they're doing. And so I encourage you to tune in. Tell your friends to tune in next week. Uh, we'll de dedicate the whole hour to the Preservation Society, uh, and Adrian's going to tell us all about what they're doing. And so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, uh, having said all that, um, after last week's show, I got doing some digging and found a couple more pictures uh, to revisit a particular couple of different spots, in fact, that we've talked about in past shows. Uh, but one was 400 South Main, I'm sorry, 400 South Church Street. If you remember, um, my earliest recollection was a Marx Brothers tire shop being there. But we showed a, a picture last week that Randy Harrell had sent me. And it was a partial image, uh, or an image with a partial view of what looked to be a home beside it. Beside, I'm sorry, not beside Mark, but beside the fire uh, house that was there, station number two, which is now, of course, the, the fire museum here in Rocky Mount. But I found another picture, um, and I'm not even sure where I found this at. It was some, uh, I think it was in a book I had. But anyway, Lee, if you would put up item number one for our viewers. This picture, um, I, I'm sorry, I just realized it was in the Rocky Mount Telegram. Uh, in 1966, there was an article about the old fire station, and this picture accompanied that article. It was October 30th, 1966, and there you go. Right in the center, of course, that is the old number two fire station. Uh, this picture dates back to the 1920s, and to the right, you see that is indeed a house there. Now, that house obviously predates the building that was there previously, uh, well, later, I should say. It, was, it predates the building that we all remember as Mark Mother's Tire. There was a few other businesses in there, too, I found out later. We'll share that information with you a little bit later on the show. But that's obviously a house, and so I thought, well, you know, I wanted to find out as much as I could about the house, when it became there, when it was built, if I could, uh, maybe who occupied the house, who built it, maybe. So that was kind of my ongoing trek when I started out getting ready for this week's show, was to find out what I could about that house right there. Um, Looking around, what I was able to determine was it looks like that was a boarding house. Now, I can't say for certain who the, who the owner was. I was never, uh, never able to nail down specifically who owned the house. 
Uh, but just for example, in the old Rocky Mountain City directories from 1920, for example, there were three different individuals who listed 400 South Church Street as their address. Um, in 1925, Rocky Mountain City directory, there was actually four different individuals who listed 400 South Church Street as their address. Two of them were actually nurses, a Myrtle uh, Edgepeth and Ethel Holland, both uh, nurses, listed 400 South Church Street as their home address. Um, but anyway, that's, it was obviously a house. So then I went and looked at a picture of a, a drawing we talked about here a few weeks ago on the show. If you recall, the gentleman, and his name escapes me at the moment, but he was a gentleman who went all over the country and drew what appeared to be aerial images. He drew them by hand. Um, and so there was one done in Rocky Mountain in 1907. So Lee, if you would, put up item number two for our viewers. And what I did was took that photograph and zeroed in on this general area of downtown Rocky Mount, this South Church Street area. And so I cropped out that part. So just to give you some perspective here, the circle, I'm sorry, the square in yellow there on the left-hand side of the screen, that is the corner of Hammond Street and Church Street. And as you can see, this was in 1907, by the way. So in 1907, when this picture was drawn, there was a house there on that corner. And as I said, I was not, not able to find out who owned the house. Um, but when I zoomed in just to verify that it was indeed a house there in 1907, a couple other things came into view. Um, in the foreground there, you see it's Franklin Street running diagonally from the bottom left-hand side of your screen to the upper right-hand side of the screen. And uh, just going off your screen there, you see that red line. The reason I did that because in 1907, Franklin Street stopped right there at the railroad tracks where Andrew Street uh, come across Franklin today. And on the right-hand side, that two-story structure was the old Rocky Mount Hosiery Company. And so at that point, that was as far as Franklin Street went. It stopped right there. And of course, you see the, what I've identified as the power plant. Now on this original photograph, these wordings you see, uh, Rocky Mount Hosiery and Franklin Street and power plant, all that was not uh, indicated on the, I actually put that in with my computer and so we have some reference there. But that red line you see is where eventually in later years, they extended Franklin Street on down and curved around and came back up into Bassett Street at the top of your screen there, that's Bassett Street. Lee, I think if you zoom out just a bit, um, we'll be able to get a little better image, a little better view of, of how that comes into being there. Uh, but the main couple things I wanted to show was that the house there on the corner of Church and Hammond in 1907, that house was there, it was a two-story house, and then of course, the power plant um, is right there, kind of on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, right there across the, almost catacombs across the street from the Rocky Mount Hosiery Company, where that red line takes off and goes around and curves back around into Bassett Street. And of course, you see the railroad track coming, the spur track coming around there in between the power plant and Rocky Mountain Hosiery Company and crossing over what is today Franklin Street. And as I said, in 1907, Franklin Street dead-ended right there at the railroad track. It didn't cross the track. So anyway. Okay, Lisa, let's move on then. Let's go to item number three, if we could. As I said, I was kind of interested in what was there at 400 South Church Street after the house was there and before my earliest recollection of a building being there was Marx Brothers Tires. Uh, I found this article uh, from the Rocky Mount Herald newspaper. If you remember, we talked about that before. There have been three or four different newspapers in Rocky Mount over the years. But in 1934, the Rocky Mount Herald uh, published this article and it makes a reference to the Hunter Oil Company located at 400 South Church Street. Uh, just an article that tells what they do. They basically uh, supplied everything from motor oil to gasoline. Uh, they were kind of an automotive supply company also and sold you know, different uh, things for cars and trucks in general. Uh, but they were located at 400 South Church Street. So this is the earliest business that I could find listed with the address of 400 South Church Street. Okay, let's move on, Lee. Fast forward a bit, um, October 16th, 1939, the Rocky Mount Telegram had an ad for the same business, Hunter Oil Company, uh, at, at the, and it lists here, number four, if you would, Lee, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the address listed here is just uh, the corner of Church and Hammond Street. It doesn't give the actual physical address, as you see there. 
But in 1930, uh, this is 30, 1939, I think I said 34. Um, the first day was 1934, this is 1939. But as you see, Hunter Oil Company was still in business there at 400 South Church Street. And you see they got number one, number two, high grade fuel oil. Um, they had a phone number too, 1622, okay. Something else that was interesting to me, I never realized that in 1941, there was a car dealer on that corner. And it just so happened, we've talked about this car before, but I never associated, never knew prior to getting ready for this week's show, I never knew that Cadell Motor Company was located at this very same spot. So number five, if you would, Lee, this ad appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, September 26, 1941, as you see there, the new Studebaker, this is ad for the new Studebaker, um, it says Studebaker's perfect turbomatic drive, fluid coupling with control, gear selection, automatic overdrive, no clutch, no creeping, no clash, um, you know, it's been said many times, Studebaker was truly ahead of its time. When they came out in the 1940s, and even into the 1950s before they finally went out, Studebaker was a fine automobile. It's a shame they didn't, didn't make it, so to speak, over the long haul, because they really did make some great cars. Um, but anyway, Cadell Motor Company was located at 400 South Church Street on this very corner where uh, the boarding house was and then the Hunter Fuel Oil Company was, and of course, in later years, Marx Brothers Tire would open up shop there. Um, but I never knew Cadell Motor Company was there. And you've heard me say before, when I was in high school, I worked for Chipley Lincoln Mercury uh, in the parts department there. And Dick Cadell was basically retired. He had gotten out of the, the car business. I think this was in the mid-1970s. And he had retired. He was in his, oh golly, late 70s, maybe even early 80s by this time. Uh, but he would come out there and hang out. He and Flake Chipley were old buddies. And he would come out and hang out there at the dealership. And I think he sold a few cars from time to time for Mr. Chipley. Um, but I got a chance to meet him, get to know him a little bit. Uh, like I said, he was way older than I was. I was in my, I don't know, mid to late teens maybe. And he was, like I said, 70s and 80s perhaps. Um, but I did get a chance to meet and get to know Dick Cadell. That's always a, a fond memory for me to, to think about uh, him running this bit. I never knew he owned a car lot when I knew him back then. Okay, so. As I said, I was really curious about the businesses that occupied that space, that 400 South Church Street space. Uh, the only one that I really knew from my childhood memory was Marx Brothers Tire, and I, I have a distinct memory of, of them being there, uh, but I wasn't sure when they opened up there or how long they were there. Number six, if you would, Lee, in 1948, the Rocky Mountain City Directory had a listing at 400 uh, South Church Street for Marx Brothers Auto Repairs. And you see right across the street at 401 was English Gulf Service Filling Station. And then of course, back across the street again on the same side as Mark Brothers, 404 was the fire station number two. And so this was the first listing that I could find anywhere, first ad, first listing. But what I found out was that they were actually there, Mark Brothers was actually there in 1946. Even though I couldn't find an ad or any reference to them in 1946, what I did find, uh, item number seven, if you would, Lee, this ad appeared, believe it or not, in 1986 in the Rocky Mount Telegram, uh, August 31st, 1986, and it says, Friends of Marx Brothers, help us celebrate our 40 years. Visit our showroom, 400 South Church Street, on September 2nd, 1986. So... For them to be celebrating a 40-year anniversary in 1986, obviously they had to have been there in 1946. So it's kind of odd that they opened up there in 1946, but the first reference I could find for them in anything, including the Rocky Mountain City directories and the newspapers.com website, uh, the first listing I could find for them was in 1948. And by that time, they had already been there a couple of years. So, uh, not quite sure why that, how that worked out to be that way, but in any case, they were there in 1946, and I had a pretty good run of it. Number eight, Lee, if you would, in 1995, this ad appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, advertising tires, and of course they were a Michelin dealer. That's what I remember most about Mark with his tires, is the Michelin man, and the fact that they were a Michelin dealer. But anyway, this ad appeared, as I said, uh, September 19th of 1995, and you see they're still there, 400 South Church Street in 1995. And I'm not sure how much longer after this ad appeared that they were there, 
but I couldn't find any other reference to them, any kind of advertisement, any kind of listing in a phone book or directory or anything else after 1995. So sometime thereafter, they closed up and went out of business. Um, and I think from that point, um, I really didn't find anything else listed at that address either. So I, sometime in that time frame, well, shortly thereafter, I'm guessing, is when that building was torn down. If anybody remembers anything past 1995, any business or anything there, let us know. I, I'm just, I couldn't find anything else to, to list as a business or, or entity that was in business there uh, at that 400 South Church Street address, uh, after 1995 anyway. So, okay. We talked a little bit last week about the Howard House Cafeteria. And so I went out and searched trying to find a picture or something, something that we could share with you um, of the Howard House Restaurant and search as I might, and I did honestly search, uh, I could not find a single photograph of the Howard House restaurant from the outside. Um, but I did find some interesting ads and, and things that I'll share with you. In fact, I'll tell you what, Lee, bring it back to me. I just realized it's almost time for our first, uh, first commercial break. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a, a quick break. When we come back from the break, we're gonna show you a couple images from an aerial map of, of Rocky Mount and specifically this South Main Street, South, uh, well that area of South Main, Western Avenue. Um, and we'll try to give you a better idea about where, uh, for those that may not remember, I know some of you do remember the Howard House, but for those that may not remember, I think we can kind of zero in and maybe show you a piece of the building that's visible from an aerial photograph that I found. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Way Back Wednesday. Take it away, Lee. I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitation and service of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. There's a main nerve that leaves your back that goes into your hip and goes down your leg. It's called the sciatic nerve. A back injury can put pressure on that nerve, causing pain, numbness, tingling, chiropractors can actually help that. At the Hammer Chiropractic Center on Sunset, we know exactly what to do. We have very good relationships with the doctors in Rocky Mount. We like to co-manage people's care. Some medications may help us do our jobs, and our jobs may help their medications work better. Are you looking for the perfect space for your business in Rocky Mount? Discover the individual offices available on the fourth floor of the Healthview Capitol Building in downtown Rocky Mount. These offices provide a professional environment with stunning views, ample natural light, and modern amenities in a secure environment. Join a community of thriving businesses and elevate your company to new heights. Rent includes utilities and Wi-Fi, and for an additional fee, you can have access to the building's gym. Schedule a tour today by calling Leanne Wester at 252-977-1616, extension 1012. Okay, we're back, we're back. Um, as I said, I've, I've got a picture, and, and this is the same photograph that uh, we've shown a few times on the show. And normally we show it in, in like a full view. And so I thought it'd be interesting to try to zoom in on it, and particularly zoom in on the area where, for example, the Howard House cafeteria was, and try to get a better idea for those that, like myself, that don't remember, don't know where it was. Um, so that's what I did. I zoomed in on the picture, and then I cropped that section I zoomed in on, uh, we got a call. Let's get this call. Hello, caller. You're on the air. All right. Before you get too far away from when you talked about the uh, South Franklin Street dead ending at the Spring Hope Railroad tracks. Right. That, that street, after you got on the south side of the Spring Hope Railroad tracks, even as far forward in time as the 1920 street map, 
it was still not named Fr Franklin Street, and the grade crossing of going across those railroad tracks was not in place as late as 1920. No kidding, okay. And I can't remember what the name of the street was on the south side of the railroad tracks. It went all the way down through South Rocky Mount, it turned and went down, dead ended against Church Street down there next to Bass Electric. But the name of that street is uh, starts with a H, but I can't remember it. But later on, when they put the grade crossing in for Franklin Street to be extended, they changed the name of that street that went south from those railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. So, um, the picture, as I said, was aerial picture of the South Rocky Mount area, uh, and particularly South uh, Main Street, Southwest Main Street, that area. And so I zoomed in on it, and then I cropped it, and I was able to kind of expand that a little bit. So Lee, if you would, let's put up item number nine for our viewers. And once we get it on the screen, we'll have to zoom in or out. I'm not sure how it's going to show up on the screen. So give us a minute to get it up there, and then we'll, we'll talk about it then. Um, but the Howard House, here we go. Okay, Lee, zoom in if you would. Everything I've got highlighted in yellow, I want to kind of address with our viewers. So to kind of zoom in and keep that yellow highlighted area, um, particularly that yellow oval, kind of a square oval shape there. Because if I'm not mistaken, and I, like I said, this is before my time, but I believe that building we're looking at right there is the top and the back view of the Howard House. Um, several references I saw in ads said across the street from Arthur Crockle's garage across the street from Howard Street. So kind of give you an idea where we're at here. You see the Crescent store on the right-hand side about midway you're on the right. And then of course J.C. Penney was across Western Avenue. So if you turned off of Main Street, for example, and headed west on Western Avenue, that first road you come to there is Howard to the right. And of course, we talked about the alleyway that come to the left and come between there. Uh, but I believe that right there, what I've got circled in yellow, I believe is the Howard House restaurant. Um, now, Lee, if you kind of now zoom out a bit now, uh, and you can see that this is one of a really good view of uh, Arthur Cockrell's garage. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit later on too, and what occupied there you go, what occupied that space there after it was torn down. Uh, but in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you can make out the center theater there. Uh, that's always easy to pick out in the picture because of that curved roof on the center theater. Uh, then, of course, on the right-hand side, right, upper right-hand corner, you see Planters Bank down there. Um, but when you zoom in on this picture, this is a very high-resolution picture. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Charlie Killebrew took this picture. But in any case, uh, it's a great picture because the detail is so clear when you zoom in. It's easy to make out a lot of different businesses and, uh, businesses and even homes and and places that we've talked about them many times on the show. So it was neat to me to, to finally be able to kind of put in view something to represent in my mind where the Howard House was and the Arthur Cockrell Garage was, because we've talked about both of those on previous shows, but I've had no recollection of either one of them. Cresses I remember very fondly. Uh, Penny's, of course, uh, was there for many, many years too, and Planners Bank, I remember that also. Uh, but the Howard House, is, I just didn't have a recollection of it. So, okay, so then after I did this, I found another aerial picture from a different angle and did the same thing. So, Lee, if you would, let's put up item number 10 for our viewers now. And as I said, I was trying to get a front-on view of the Howard House, and I just I went through all my aerial pictures and everything I could find and just could not find a, a front-on view. Okay, so this big yellow circle there in the top portion of the screen, if you kind of zoom in on that, Lee, obviously we're kind of, I think it was probably on top of the uh, People's Building is what I think it was taken from, the People's Bank Building, uh, looking roughly southwest, uh, southwest Main Street, be across the street, across the tracks. Okay, then I kind of pan toward the top of that picture. And you see J.C. Penny there, and you see Chris, there you go. And as I said a while ago, the road, that's Western Avenue going between J.C. Penney and, and the Crescent store there. And so if you were to come down Main Street right here and turn right onto Western Avenue, it's a little ways down. Um, it was referred to in some places as the J.C. Penney Storage Building. And then of course at some point it became the Howard House Cafeteria. And, um, and so, but I believe that um, it's just to the kind of 
not quite center, more to the right of center uh, within that yellow circle uh, is where um, the Howard House restaurant was. And like I said, just, even this doesn't give you a good view of it, but that's a little better angle uh, from a different view. Now we have the call. Let's get this call. Hello, caller, you on the air. All right. Arthur Cockrell's garage on the corner there behind Cress's. Right. Directly straight across Western Avenue from the front entranceway in the facade of the Howard House cafeteria. Arthur Cockrell's garage was the next door business neighbor to the Evening Telegram's office, which faced Howard Street. Okay, that's right. All right. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. So, you know, like I said, this, uh, in my mind, I just could not really get a grip on where the Howard House was. And so I was trying to at least get some general references of things that I, that I did remember and things that I could recall. And so I hope this kind of helps some of you, too, that maybe have not been here as long as some of us have been and had no recollection of ever being a Howard House restaurant. Um, interesting tidbit, the Howard House restaurant actually changed names uh, and there was at least two other businesses in that same location. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and put up item number 11. And this is a, a, a snapshot of, of the area today. And you're looking now due west. Uh, you see Western Avenue directly in front of you. Uh, there on the right is the old Cresses building. It's now, of course, uh, Virginia's dress shop. Um, on the left, on the uh, left-hand side of your screen there, the location where Penny's used to be, of course, that building has been torn down. It's, it's long gone. And just beyond Penny's, if you're headed a little bit further west on Western Avenue on the left-hand side, would have been the Howard House restaurant. Prior to that, of course, it would have been the Penny Storage building and then Howard House restaurant. And then, as Eric just said, across the street from that would have been Arthur Cockrell's garage. And so, you know, it's, it's such a shame to me, and this, you know, when I talked to Adrian Copeland earlier this week, or last week, I should say, about coming on the show next week, um, she and I both have a, a, a real passion about preserving not only old buildings, old houses, uh, you know, old monuments, old statues. Um, there's just a real sad disregard um, for history amongst too many people, in my humble opinion. Um, you know, once these buildings are gone, once they're torn down and destroyed, and all we have left is photographs and our memories, um, it, it's hard to, uh, for someone who don't remember, don't have a visual image in their mind, it's hard to look at a photograph or a picture, even a painting for that matter, uh, and get a, a real good sense of what it was like uh, when it was there in operation. Uh, and there were so many buildings in Rocky Mount that have just, you know, been torn down and demolished. Um, maybe they had gotten too far gone to try to salvage. I'm sure that was the case in at least some cases. Um, but, you know, I just, I'd love to see a little more effort put into preserving some of our history around Rocky Mount, particularly these old buildings. Okay, I'll get off my stump for now and we'll move on. Lead number 12, if you would. Um, I mentioned that the uh, Howard House opened up here. This uh, ad appeared uh, actually in, in August of 1955. And you see the headline says, New Cafeteria to Open in the City Early This Fall. So this ad appeared in August, um, and it was literally a couple of months before the restaurant opened. Um, but it says, you know, Rocky Mount's going to have a new cafeteria soon, the first such type of eating establishment to be located here in some time. Um, and it goes on to say the business will be known as Howard House Cafeteria. It'll be located on Western Avenue in the building formerly occupied by the Norley Notion Company. That was a new one to me. I'd never heard of that either. Um, but in any case, like I said, that building had been there for some time and was actually um, had several different businesses in it over the years. So let's fast forward a bit, Lee, number 13 if we could. November, November the 18th to be specific, in 1955 is when the Howard House Cafeteria officially opened for business. And you see here it says the, How the new Howard House Cafeteria located at the corner of Howard Street and Western Avenue will, will be open here Saturday morning. It was announced today by the management. The first meal will be served at 11 o'clock, 11.30. Owned by a corporation of local businessmen, the cafeteria will be managed by Charles Zrax for the present. Donald Reams, now with Harvey's Cafeteria in Durham, will take over as manager in about 30 days. So, since so the cafeteria will be open daily from 11.30 to 2 p.m. 
and then from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. So they close uh, after the lunch rush and open back up for an evening meal. It says on Sundays we'll be open uh, only from noon until 2.30 p.m. So they were literally open seven days a week. Um, and you know, one of the things that I came to realize while getting ready for the, for the night show and doing the research, this was a very, very popular restaurant. Um, and I say that because I saw multiple advertisements for multiple meetings that took place here. Everything from church groups to Bible study groups to insurance agencies um, to things like professional businesswomen's associations. Uh, there was just a slew of ads stating, you know, such as a meeting will take place on such and such a date at the Howard House Cafeteria. And so for many years, it became a central meeting place in downtown Rocky Mount. Um, and it, it carried on for many years that way. Number 14, if you would, Lee, uh, November 18th, 1955, the same day that that ad appeared, this ad appeared, and it's one of these congratulatory ads um, that you know, we've talked about this many times in the past. It was just a really common practice for local businesses to advertise uh, with a new opening of a new business. In some cases, even if they were a competitor, um, but it was just, a, you know, they would sell these ads and the local businesses would purchase an ad and it was kind of like, hey, welcome to the neighborhood, welcome to the business community, we're glad you're here. Um, and it was it's a, something that's very rare today. You just don't see this kind of camaraderie and, and, and getting along, for lack of a better term, amongst businesses. There's too much cutthroat um, you know, attempting to better each other. But it was, that was not the case in the 1950s and 60s around Rocky Mountain, the businesses were eager to promote each other, to help each other. Um, and I think it, in, long, in a, a large part, contributed to the success of a lot of businesses in Rocky Mount that were here for many, many years and did quite well. Okay, leave, so move on. Uh, December, the very next month, 1955, this ad appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram. And they were, of course, encouraging Christmas shoppers to eat with us at the Howard House Cafeteria. Fine meal here, Friday night shoppers. That special was baked pork chop with apple. Choice of two vegetables, bread, butter, coffee, and your, and your drink, all you can drink for 60 cents. That's a meal. Um, it says, beat the rush and eat with us, open 5.30 to 8 p.m. And you see there, uh, Western Avenue at Howard Street, quite often was the way the, uh, the business was listed as a, as a location, uh, Western Avenue at Howard Street. So this was 1955. The business had been in operation um, for you know a little while now. It was doing well, obviously. Um, fast forward to 1960, not sure what happened, but for some reason, two of the business partners, two of the three, decided they wanted to opt out. They sold their share. And December of 1960, this column appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, and it talks about the Howard House being sold, or at least part of it. It says, C.A. Allman and D.H. Cole, local businessmen who have operated the Howard House cafeteria here for the last five years, announced today that they have sold their interest in the business. J.E. Harrison, restaurant man of considerable experience, has become the principal owner of the Howard House, which will continue to operate under the same name. Harrison, who formerly was affiliated with the cafeteria as a manager, has been operating the Kinstonian Motel restaurant at Kinston. Allman and Cole gave as their reason for selling the fact that they desire to devote all our time and energies to the drug business. So obviously this is the Mr. Almond of Almond Drug Store, and uh, they wanted to, you know, commit themselves more to that end of the business, and so they sold their interest in the Howard House and, and moved on. Um, and so the Howard House continued on for a number of years as the Howard House. However, in 1964, there was yet another change. Item number 17, if you would, Lee. Uh, February the 25th of 1964, this column appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, and it makes mention that the Townhouse Cafeteria begins operation here. And it says the Townhouse Cafeteria, located in the first block of Western Avenue, was in business today as the successor to the Howard House. Paul Conway, Townhouse owner who has 25 years experience in the restaurant business, promised first quality food and service um, at cafeteria prices. So anyway, um, I guess the previous uh, gentleman who was Mr. Harrison uh, decided to himself sell out and Mr. Paul Conway purchased the, the business and changed the name to the townhouse as opposed to the Howard House. 
Now, there's something interesting about this too, and, and keep the name in mind, it was the Howard House for at least five years, uh, well, longer actually, uh, five, nine years, it was the Howard House restaurant. But it was so popular and it was so well known throughout Rocky Mount that advertisements for the townhouse restaurant would still reference the Howard House restaurant. Uh, number 18, if you would, Lee, uh, this same, same day and the same issue of the Rocky Mount Telegram that that article appeared right there, this ad appeared. And you see there it says the townhouse cafeteria, formerly the Howard House, is now open under new ownership and management. And there's Mr. Paul Conway, uh, one of the partners, Mr. Bobby Conway, um, that's his son, was also a partner, and then Mr. Ray Westbrook, of course, was the manager. But up at the very top there where it says the townhouse cafeteria, and underneath that in parentheses says formerly the Howard House, and down at the very bottom of the ad, beneath the word cafeteria, again, they've got formerly the Howard House. So they were pretty smart, I think, to keep that reference to the original Howard House restaurant because it was so popular and so many folks knew about it. Um, let's move on, Lee. Item number 19. Um, this was in 1965, the very next year, January of 1965. Um, this ad appeared, the townhouse cafeteria. Uh, this was advertised on a Sunday special. Uh, this is one of the very few ads that I saw that actually listed the physical address. At the very bottom it says 127 Western Avenue. So that was the address of the uh, Howard House. And then of course, and later it was the address uh, for the townhouse. And item number 20, if you would, Lee, in 1965, uh, September the 3rd, I'm sorry, August 3rd, 1965, this ad and uh, picture appeared in the Rocky Mount, not an ad, I'm sorry, article and picture appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, and it says Coffee Club. And this is pretty neat here. It says, almost any weekday morning you can find most of these men, sometimes more, gathered around a table in a townhouse cafeteria having coffee. All of them are retired from service with the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad, and those in the picture represent 333 years of service to the ACL. The tales they tell and the yarns they spin keep them occupied for most of the morning. Those in the picture are left to right uh, in their tenure uh, in post with the railroad as follows. Mr. E.V. Brogdon, shop foreman, 38 years with the railroad. W.M. Ezell, sheet, uh, sheet metal worker, eight and a half years with the railroad. E.R. Riles, senior, um, was listed as a train man, 51 years with the railroad. H.V. Uh, Simpson was a ticket agent with 50 years of service. Howard Gunn was a chief clerk with 51 years of service. G.R. Turner was also a chief clerk with 49 years of service. Uh, Robert Dennis Sr. was a crew clerk with 46 years. And H.A. Stotesbury Sr. was a wheel shop foreman with 40 years of service. And so again, this was a very popular place. It attracted a lot of local people uh, for a variety of meetings and so forth. And it was just really neat that uh, it was so popular, in fact, that the new owners uh, decided whenever they would advertise or promote it, they would still use the formerly Howard House reference so folks would know, okay, I know where that's at then. It was the old Howard House. I know where that is, so we know where the new restaurant's going to be. Okay, um, before we go to our next break, I wanted to just show one more. Um, well, I tell you what, let's go ahead and take the break. I just realized we're a little bit over our break point there. So Lee, let's go ahead and take a next commercial break. When we come back, I've got a couple more articles to share with and ads about the townhouse slash uh, Howard House restaurant cafeteria. And then we're going to move on and talk about some other businesses and buildings around Rocky Mount that you may not be familiar with, but you will be at the end of the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Way Back Wednesday. I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory. 
as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service. We offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family. And we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. There's a main nerve that leaves your back that goes into your hip and goes down your leg. It's called the sciatic nerve. A back injury can put pressure on that nerve, causing pain, numbness, tingling. Chiropractors can actually help that. At the Hammer Chiropractic Center on Sunset, we know exactly what to do. We have very good relationships with the doctors in Rocky Mount. We like to co-manage people's care. Some medications may help us do our jobs, and our jobs may help their medications work better. Are you looking for the perfect space for your business in Rocky Mount? Discover the individual offices available on the fourth floor of the Healthview Capitol Building in downtown Rocky Mount. These offices provide a professional environment with stunning views, ample natural light, and modern amenities in a secure environment. Join a community of thriving businesses and elevate your company to new heights. Rent includes utilities and Wi-Fi, and for an additional fee, you can have access to the building's gym. Schedule a tour today by calling Leanne Wester at 252-977-1616, extension 1012. And we're back, we're back. During the break, I got a text message from Randy Harrell, and he sent me a picture. I'm going to have to share this picture on next week's show. I don't have any way to get it into the system tonight. Uh, but he sent me a picture on, in a text message here um, that was taken outside of Arthur Cockrell's garage. It's pretty neat. It's a picture of uh, uh, three or four folks, or like maybe a couple of uh, adults and a couple of kids walking down the sidewalk right, in, right outside of Arthur Cockrell's garage. And... Um, so I kept going to the left, see if I could get over there and find the front of the Howard House cafeteria. But of course, it's not in, in the view, it's not in the picture. But we're, we're that close, we're that close. Um, but speaking, getting back to the Howard House, you know, in 1964, the Howard House changed ownership. And of course, they changed the name from the Howard House to the Townhouse. And as before the break, I mentioned that, you know, the Howard House was so popular that the new owners said, hey, we need to let folks know that this is the same place, same building, so they, they know where that is. And so several ads I saw had the phrase, formerly the Howard House, or the former Howard House Cafeteria, somewhere in the ad. I got a chuckle out of this next article, though. Uh, September of 1966, the Rocky Mount Telegram had an article about a promotion that was going on amongst downtown Rocky Mount merchants. And the idea was that there was going to be um, free parking, uh, tickets for free movies, um, just a lot of, you know, combined effort, if you will, amongst local businesses to get people to downtown Rocky Mount. And so the meeting place for these uh, local business owners to gather was here at the townhouse restaurant or cafeteria. Of course, when they put the ad together, Whoever was in charge of the copy for the ad had a slight boo-boo. Lee, if you would, put up number 21 on the screen for our viewers. And I'll, this is a fairly short article, so I'll, I'll read the kind of part of it that's, that I got in trouble from anyway. Uh, it's, it's a neat article because it does, uh, I mentioned a while ago about the, you know, the camaraderie and the helping each other and the working together. Okay, Lee, zoom out if you would. It kind of zoomed in when you brought it up on the screen. So if you would, zoom out so we can get the whole thing on the screen. Um... Okay, down in the bottom, kind of pan to the left lead. You see where the yellow is in the bottom left-hand corner there? Anyway, the, what I wanted to point out to you is that when they put this article together in 1966, go the other way, Lee. There you go. Perfect. Now, if, if you can zoom out and get all that on the screen because it's part of it's being cut off. There you go. That's all you can get? Okay. Well, anyway, when, when they put this meeting together, Whoever was in charge of the meeting said, okay, we've got to tell everybody where we're going to meet at. Well, they put in the article that the meet says 60 merchants attended the Friday um, and Saturday uh, meeting at the Rocky Mount. Um, oh, I'm, I'm reading two columns together here. <laughs> uh, 60 merchants attended the second meeting of the Rocky Mount Downtown Committee in the Howard House Cafeteria. 
So literally two years after the business was sold, the name was changed, it was still being referred to as the Howard House Cafeteria. Now, I'm sure the new owners didn't mind. People knew, you know, where the Howard House was, and obviously down they would know where the townhouse was. But I just thought it was kind of comical that uh, whoever put this ad together, instead of saying this downtown merchants meeting is going to take place in the townhouse cafeteria, they put in there the Howard House cafeteria. Okay, uh, lastly on this, along the same line here, lead number 22, uh, this ad appeared uh, in 1969, and this was the last ad that I could find referencing either the Howard House or the Townhouse Cafeteria. Uh, as I said, this was September 24th, 1969, and you see they had country and western music with all the fried chicken or fish you can eat no alcoholic beverages or dancing. <laughs> um, admission was $2. Um, I'm not sure what the event was here. It seems to have been some kind of event. Uh, they were charging admission, obviously, so I'm guessing some kind of private party, perhaps, but they made a point of saying, we're not going to have any alcoholic beverages. We're not going to be dancing in here, so come eat with us and, and bring your $2 admission. <laughs> uh, but anyway, as I said, that was the last ad I could find for anything at that 127 Western Avenue location as far as the operating business. Now, in 1982, this was some, what's that, four, 13 years later, a picture and a small caption appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, number 23 if you would, Lee, uh, of a demolition that was taking place. And you know, we talked a few minutes ago about you know old buildings being torn down and demolished, and sometimes I, I think it's probably because they were, had been neglected to the point where it would cost more to salvage them than it would to just tear them down, and, and the decision has been made to tear them down. But it says, motorists traveling in the downtown area on Western Avenue should look out for falling bricks. The old Penny's Warehouse, which later housed the townhouse cafeteria, followed by Ancient of Days, is coming down. The city had condemned the property, and the owner was faced with either improving the structure or tearing it down. I had forgotten all about the ancient of days. I went there as a, as a teenager. It was kind of a, a, a Christian gathering place. Um, a lot of church groups would go there, and I had forgot all about it. But when I saw that, I said, well, gee, I don't have any recollection of the Howard cafeteria or the townhouse cafeteria, but I very much remember the ancient of days. And so I can say I had been in the building that housed the Howard Cafeteria, Howard House Cafeteria, and of course later the Townhouse Cafeteria. But it was torn down uh, in 1982, this, or this picture and caption appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram. Okay, so lead number 24 is just a snapshot of the area today. Uh, if you're standing in the middle of Western Avenue looking east, uh, can we get that up lead number, there you go. So there, what I've got circled in the yellow box on your right-hand side is roughly where the Howard House ca um, cafeteria and, of course, later the townhouse cafeteria would have been located. Directly across the street on the corner there would have been Arthur Cockrell's garage. And in later years, there was another building there. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But another interesting fact, um, I mentioned that 1969 was the last reference I could find to anything at this location, this 127 Western Avenue address. Um, so I thought, well, you know, maybe um, they just went out of business. Maybe the, the uh, Howard or the Townhouse Cafeteria went out of business. And then I stumbled across this ad from 1984. I mean, a quick jump, a long jump forward from 19, what did I say, 1980, no, 1969 was the last ad I saw, and then in 1984, I found this ad, let me put up number 25 if you would, and I can't swear to you this is the same business, now can we zoom on that, Lee? I'm not sure why it zooms in like this when we bring them up sometimes, but it may have something to do with the way I save the images, uh, but it's, it's zoomed in quite a bit. But anyway, the townhouse restaurant is listed, here we go, in 1984 at 132 South Church Street. Now, if that address rings a bell to you, and it probably does because in later years, 
132 South Church Street was the home of the Duchess. In later years, it was home to Central Cafe. In earlier years, prior to this, the Ivy Room was there. Um, there was oh, I, I, at least one or two other, I forgot now how many uh, restaurants were in that building, but 132 Church Street has been a very popular spot for restaurants many, many times over the years. And so I don't know if the townhouse restaurant moved from the Western Avenue address to here, or if this is an entirely different townhouse restaurant. And I never remember there being a townhouse restaurant at Church Street, but in 1984, I was in the Navy and gone overseas, so if it had been there, um, I would have known about it anyway. I don't think it was there when I came back from the Navy in 1986 anyway. Okay, so I mentioned that um, where Arthur Cockrell's garage used to be, that building was torn down and another building was built there in 1961 and this is the building uh, and you see there it says the headline reads first occupants take suites in the new Rose office building okay so in a, you know if you ride by this building there's a plaque on the building on, on this on this wall that faces Western Avenue and it says the Rose building and so and I've been by this building a thousand times over the years but when I was doing some research and looking at the building from a street view, I noticed that the Rose Building plaque on the side, and I thought, well, I don't remember seeing that before. But anyway, a couple of little neat bits of information about this building. Number one, by the way, this ad appeared, this article appeared, I should say, September 8, 1961, and that's when the building was first occupied. I'm sure construction probably took place in the pre previous year, uh, but in September of 61, it was finished, and Auckland began moving in. Now, listen to this. There was several insurance companies, um, Western and Southern Life Insurance Company had an office in there, um, and there was, uh, let's see, the North Carolina Department of Revenue had an office in there. Uh, uh, there was a certified public accountant in there. Um, believe it or not, the local branch of the FBI had an office in the Rose Building here in Rocky Mount at some point. Um, and of course we talked last week about it being built by the North State Construction Company here in Rocky Mount. And the owners, get this now, the owners of this building were Mary Rose, Dr. I. Woodall Rose Jr., well I think it's pronounced Woodall, I. Woodall Rose, um, and George E. Rose. The building is managed by Simmons and Harris. So this of course is the same family that run I.W. Rose Drugstore uh, down on Main Street, around the corner. Um, and I didn't realize that this is the same family that is connected to D.J. Rose Construction, okay? Um, and that's, you know, the Rose name has been around Rocky Mount literally for 150 years. That's, you can go way, way back in Rocky Mount history and find Rose family. And so, when I saw this and got to thinking about the Rose Building, I remembered hearing about another Rose Building, and it kind of took me a while to figure out where the other Rose Building was that I remember hearing. So before we migrate away, please put up number 27 for our viewers because this is just a, a, a more recent shot, there you go, of the Rose Building. And you see toward the left-hand side of your screen there, uh, there you go, of course that's Howard Street off to your right there, but this pretty green brick uh, glass building there. That is the Rose Building, and as I said, right across the street from it would have been the entrance to the Howard House slash Townhouse Cafeteria. Okay, number 28, Lee. The other Rose Building that I remember hearing about, and I can't say that I remember seeing the building. I, I, I seem to have a fuzzy recollection, but I, this is another aerial shot, and you're looking at five points, downtown Rocky Mountain, kind of lower left-hand corner screen there is five points, okay. What I've got circled in yellow there is the Rose Apartment Building um, from about 1950. Now that building was there, it's right behind the old original post office there in the bottom left hand corner of the picture is the old post office. And then of course to the left of that would have been the May and Gorm Drug Store. Um, but I've looked, there you go. I've looked high and low, tried to find a picture of the front of that building. Oh, we got a got a call. Hello, caller, you on the air? All right, that building you're looking at right now with the yellow circle around it, that's the old Rose building where DJ Rose's office was. And when they moved away from that place and it got torn down, 
uh, they had, they had, in the 50s, they had turned it into an apartment complex. That's right. Many apart apartments were in it. But uh, that curved roof line that you're looking at at the top of it is a telltale tale of the old Rose Building behind the old Rocky Mount Post Office. Uh, you're exactly right. That's exactly what that is. All and right. there was actually, okay, I'll let you go. All right, thank you. Yeah, Eric is right. That is the Rose Building. DJ Rose built the building, had an office in there. In later years, they did indeed put apartments in there. There was actually five apartments and a basement apartment in this building. Uh, number 29, if you believe, we're about to run out of time here. Let's kind of move along here. Number 29, this is a snapshot from the Rocky Mount City Directory listing from 1940, 1942, 1948, and 1963. And I did this just to kind of give you an idea uh, in 1940, there were apartments there, and I'm not sure when it was converted to all apartments, but this is 1940, and in 1940, 201 Rose Street, which is the address of that building, was apartments, and there was actually five apartments and a basement apartment, uh, and they were all occupied, by the way. In 1942, the Rocky Mountain City Directory also showed 201 is Rose Street apartments, and there were five apartments, and they were still all, you know, all full, but you see the basement was vacant. By 1942, the basement was vacant. 1948, a little to your right there, uh, there were five apartments and they don't mention the basement in this, in this uh, 1948 city directory. But by 1963, Lee, if you'll zoom to the far right of this image, in 1963, all five apartments in the Rose apartment building were empty. There you go. One through five was vacant. So I'm not sure, probably sometime shortly thereafter, this building was torn down. And so, you know, I, I really can't say I have a recollection of that building, um, but if anyone's got a picture of the front of that building, I would surely love to see it. And we run slam out of time. I've, I've got some pictures I want to get to tonight. We just ran out of time. So we'll save those. Uh, probably won't get to them next week because I've got Adrian Copeland coming in. So we'll look for the week after next and we'll talk some more about the Rose family and another Rose family uh, that was very prominent in Rocky Mount. So Lee, bring it back to me. Folks, that's gonna do it for us tonight. We run slam out of time. I do apologize, um, but I think those uh, that called in and shared your memories with us, appreciate that. Uh, don't forget next week, Adrian Copeland will be here for the entire one hour of the show. You don't wanna miss that. She's got some great information. She's a really nice lady and I look forward to having the show. Have a great week. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to one another, and we'll see you next week with more Way Back Wednesday. Good night.